I'm so enjoying season two. I've seen three episodes. Um, yeah, I guess my first question for you both, uh, let me pull up, is, you know, the women really rely on each other this season for advice. Do you think that maybe they need the friendship sometimes more than they need the group to succeed? Absolutely. I think they're one and the same. It's yeah. like, that. The, yeah, that is the, that's the, the jewel of this kind of, the chemistry of them together is that they make each other better. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think Wiki would understand that she could say that out loud yet, <laughs> but she's on her way to understanding that the friendship is the real thing that's going to save her, not the success in her career. Yeah, that's great. Um, Dawn, or so for Dawn's character, Sarah, um, you know, I love that she's worried about her place in the group as a songwriter. You obviously have experience songwriting. Um, do you ever feel like that when you're collaborating? Like, I really related to that as somebody who writes and just like, oh, you know, you want to have your place or even just in, you know, outside of writing and being creative. Oh, a thousand percent. I was just sharing a story with them. I did a big event in the music industry recently for the Grammys and um, had a tremendous rebirth of imposter syndrome where I was like, I went into this room and all of a sudden was like, I don't belong here. I'm not good enough. Everyone, like, I just went down this like whole spiral of negative self-talk and it was really interesting. It's a very relatable thing. It doesn't matter how much you have done or accomplished or achieved. It's a really, it's, I feel like, at least for me personally, I'm always kind of teetering on the edge. It's really going to be like my life's work to remember I am enough, I am enough. And so I love that part of, of Dawn's story that she's, you know, as someone who kind of, I think, diminished herself and her impulse to contribute because it wasn't welcomed she's giving herself permission to actually kind of reach for it this season uh, you know and they all are in in different ways they're all reaching for something this season and it's really really cool to watch them deepen yeah imposter syndrome actually seems to be a theme um with among all of the women on the show um but i actually i uh, wanted to ask uh renee i wanted to ask you about uh wiki with uh, she's one of my favorites and i love everybody on the show but um she is talking about human mode what, what does that mean for her <laughs> yeah i forgot human mode um <laughs> it's like you know klingon like it's another <laughs> maybe there's a Maybe I could learn a few words in human mode. Like I feel like, do you know what I mean? Like, how do they say hello? Like that's, <laughs> like I feel like it's just yeah. so wonderful. Like, you know, it's just like, she's like gonna stick, stick a toe in it just to see um, what it means. Literally her toe, literally her Little foot. And even, I don't know, but not even the good foot. Yeah. The other foot, you know. So um, yeah, so I just, I just love, I love her. I lo and that's what I love about her. It's, it's, she's not one, none of them are one thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, and that's, this friendship is so beautiful actually, because she is all, she is in the dictionary next to human mode, Dawn, <laughs> you know? And then there's Wiki who's all in career mode all the time. And she's spend so much time, they spend so much time with each other that I think they're both going to become better yeah. because she's going to rub off on her and she's rubbing off. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of, a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. And it's what we should all do and what we all do in our friendships. And it's fun to watch it. Yeah, um, you know, the, one of the things too I really loved this season so far is the set song, Sarah, that you sing. I love that so much. I would listen to that like, you know, on my own. Um, oh my where, how did that come about? That is so fantastic. I loved it so much. Oh my well, gosh, the video of it. Oh. oh my gosh. So Meredith Scardino, our brilliant creator and showrunner, um, and Jeff Richmond, our music guru, um, they reached out you know, they, they've they done a beautiful thing where I'm invited to sort of participate in the music, but it's not a prerequisite. So every once in a while, they'll be like, you know, are, is there yeah. is there something you want to do with this one? And Meredith was talking about this concept of like, you know, Dawn is a, is a fledgling songwriter in some ways. And so the idea that it, you're just, you're trying to kind of say too much with one song and <laughs> she gets really hooked by this idea like set. There's a million ver, you know, I can't remember the number, but yeah. it's like 200 and something. 400 or something. Yeah. yeah. There's like, <laughs> so she's like, that'll be, yeah, that's, that should be what I spend my time on is like trying to use every version of this word in a song. So I, I worked on, I was on a long, I was on a cross country flight and I was on a layover in Denver or something. And I sat with my laptop and like was putting this together and had such a fun time of just trying to make this 
you know, Odyssey happened for Dawn, you know, which I love coming through Dawn, like the lens of Dawn, who's so like grounded and she's just, you know, writing this ridiculous song. And it's the, very funny. But it was also like to, to, to feature it in a way that was so beautiful. The amount of time, they really, I mean like we, so many of our flashbacks and really special moments, they're really like, we gotta get it, we gotta go. But this moment, they were aware how important and how special it was. And so they really shot it, like they took the time to shoot yeah. it like, it a, like a music video. Like a music yeah. video and it was yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I loved it so much. I was like, oh, like I watched it twice and I'm like, this is great. Um, one last question, I think I only have time for one. Um, so Renee, for Wiki, how does her ugly foot play into her journey? <laughs> you know, it's person. interesting. I, I'm, I'm going along the journey as well because um, we it's not like they gave us eight episodes and we read it all and then we figured out how we were doing it. You know, they were writing it as we were moving along. So I didn't know where it was going myself. I was just like, oh, okay, I guess I got a bad foot. You know, and you know, I, I know everybody, not just women, can relate to some part of themselves that they think is ugly. You know, like I, I remember I had this one scar on my knee right here and I remember being like, oh my God, when it happened as a kid, like this ugly is on my knee, like should I hide it? And here I'm featuring it. Like that's, that's the journey I think for Wiki um, in season two. And you know, I think the foot is like this metaphor for the part of myself that I'm mm -hmm. ashamed of and the embracing of it, you know, like I'm gonna show this to some, I mean, who am I gonna show it to? Like, I mean, in this moment, there's a scene where she, they say, well, show it to us, the girls. Yeah. And she's like, oh. <laughs> and she possibly. actually, she, she trusts them to show it to them. And then I think as you see, as the season goes along, does she actually meet somebody else that she would show her ugly foot to? Oh, yay. Yeah, okay. so that's, that's the beauty yeah. of it. It's the metaphor for the embracing of the parts of yourself that you've crazily decided is ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much, and I can't wait to see more episodes. Thank nice. you. Thanks. Awesome. Um, I'm so enjoying season two. I wanted to let you guys know. Uh, oh, you guys good. are so funny. Yeah. Um, my first question, I guess, uh, I would ask uh, Busy. So Summer and Kev are still not divorced, um, and Summer is holding back from dating, and uh, I was wondering, what's holding her back from from dating? Well, I think a thing happens sort of early in the season with Summer where she feels like she gets unfairly um, vilified uh, in a paparazzi photo for yes. possibly cheating on Kev, even though they are getting divorced. And she's really, I think it like kind of is a bummer for her. It scares her. It scares her a bit. I mean, she does try to sort of get out there a bit. And um, and I think that that's part of the journey. But I, what I really like is that that's not the focus of Summer's journey this year. Because also, like, it doesn't have to be about a man. Like, it doesn't have to be about a character, a woman who finally, like, splits from an unhealthy partnership immediately, like, finding love again, you know? And I think that one thing that's really important and relatable about this character, even though it may seem, like, heightened and sort of, in many ways, you know, wish fulfillment, like, we're pop stars, whatever, is that she's really actually in her late 30s, early 40s, right? She's not 40 yet. She's 39. I think so. Yeah. Um, she's trying to now reevaluate who she is and who she wants to be without having this person standing next to her that she really allowed to give her so much of her identity. And I mean, I know that that's relatable to so many people, you know, and I think that especially a lot of women of our generation, you get to your later 30s, in, into your 40s and you sort of look around and you take stock and it's like, but wait, what? why did I do these things? What did I, why did I make these choices? What are these choices? Whose choices were these really? And, um, and I think that's like the reckoning for all of the girls in looking back at the group and the choices that they made both together and then separately. So, you know, I'm, I love where Summer ends up going. She's, there's a, there's an episode with my parents who are played by Amy Sedaris and Neil Flynn, which is really fun. Um, 
and was a great week to have them on so set. Great. And uh, and it's really about her figuring out her own worth and standing in that by the end. I love that. Yeah, I also like that like even like a different show might have her more into looking for dating and, and that's not a part of her journey, you're right. And also like she her victory is that Stevia said hi to her at the kitchen yeah. or something. <laughs> right, like that. Right, I thought right. that was so cute. Yeah. Um but I love that like Gloria also has like a similar you know journey that she's dealing with heartbreak and um you know she discovers she might have game, which I really like that. But oh, the God. scene I want to ask you about is that um when she takes the Percocet um Paula oh my god that is so funny. What was it like filming that scene? Was it scripted to put the dice in your mouth? Like so many questions. <laughs> yeah, the dice, the dice were scripted, uh, but I think we did a little switcheroo where I could actually suck on because I'm kind of gaggy. You are too. We're both very gaggy, and so I can't like have like something plastic in my mouth. It gags me out, or watch someone with something plastic in their mouth. So. I think they put like candy or gum or something in my mouth once we switched it out so I could like kind of chew it. But um, the Percocet thing was so funny was and insane. and so fun to do because it was it was so bizarre. And then to record the music later, which the, the song is insane yes. and like a nightmare, something out of a nightmare. It is just a true the nightmare. Pink guide rap. It's just yeah. very nightmarish. Um, but I also have been through an, uh, three different knee replacements between my two knees. And so, and I just went through another one last summer. So it, it, the idea of the pills and all that, like when you do get zoned out, it's like, they were saying to me, like, let any emotion go over your face. Like I was really going on a journey, a facial journey. My best friend, uh, growing up in, in college, James Anderson, and I uh, used to play a facial journey and we'd pick two emotions like nausea and horniness. And then you have to go from this to this, but take like a long time doing it with your face. And it used to be our favorite game all the time because it's very small facial changes in your face. And, um, and that's, you know, when we were supposed to be studying in college, but we did that yeah, for, you know what? for like an hour you know and what? a half. That paid off. It paid off. That Good. paid off. Yeah. So anyway, it's it was super fun to do to do those scenes, and it's always it's always fun when our characters have some disaster because we just know they're gonna they're gonna land on their feet eventually. Well, I mean, I think that's just the truth. or help each other on. That's to what I was feet. gonna say. Yeah. I think that that's like the truth of life too, and a and really female friendship, mm -hmm. and especially as you age, which is the you know, at the end of the day, it's your friends yeah, and they will surround you and like bolster you up and, um, and I don't know. Give I you a place to fall. Give you a yeah. place to fall. Yeah. 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 I love that. Well, thank you so much. And I can't wait thank to see more episodes. Thank, thank you, you so much. Have a great one.